There are those who save lives, and then there are those who take them. Vicky Dawn Jackson was both. This is a tale that takes us to the small town of Nakona, Texas, where a woman named Vicky Dawn Jackson worked as a nurse. Nakona, a close-knit community where everyone knows everyone, was the kind of place where people moved to escape the hustle and bustle of city life. It was quiet, peaceful, and safe. Or at least, it was supposed to be. In the heart of this community was the Nokona General Hospital, the place where Vicky Dawn Jackson was employed as a licensed vocational nurse. Vicky was not just an ordinary nurse. She was someone whom the people of Nokona trusted with their lives. Her face was a familiar sight, a beacon of hope for those in the throes of sickness and pain. She was the one who held their hands through their darkest hours, offering comfort and care. Her colleagues admired her dedication, her patients loved her compassion, and the community respected her. She was for all intents and purposes an angel in scrubs, a beacon in the stormy seas of illness and despair. But what if the angel you put your faith in was not an angel at all? What if beneath that caring smile and those comforting hands, there was something sinister lurking? Vicky Dawn Jackson, the trusted nurse, the caring friend, the respected member of the community, had a secret. A secret so dark, it would shock the entire community and make headlines around the country. A secret that would turn the peaceful town of Nakona into the backdrop of one of the most chilling true crime stories of the century. But beneath the facade of a dedicated nurse, a dark secret lurked. As we delve deeper into the life of Vicky Dawn Jackson, we will uncover a tale of deceit, death, and a darkness that would forever taint the image of the angelic nurse from Nokona. In the small town of Nokona, death became a frequent visitor. This peaceful, tight-knit community was shaken to its core as the Grim Reaper began to stalk the corridors of Nokona General Hospital. An unsettling pattern began to emerge as an inexplicable surge in patient death sent shockwaves through the town. This wasn't the ordinary, inevitable dance with death that hospitals are accustomed to. No, the frequency and circumstances were unusual, eerie even. Patients seemingly on the mend were suddenly passing away. Those who were stable one moment were gone the next. The hospital, a sanctuary of healing and care, had become a theatre of unexplained deaths. The hospital staff, pillars of the community, were at a loss. Doctors, nurses, all baffled by the sudden increase in mortality, they pored over medical records, second-guessed their diagnoses, and questioned their own competence. Nothing seemed to add up. It was as if an invisible spectre was haunting the wards, choosing its victims at random. The fear was palpable, spreading through Nakona like a chilling wind. The hospital, once the heart of the community, was now viewed with dread. Families feared for their loved ones, and the elderly were hesitant to seek medical help. The town was on edge, its faith in the hospital shattered. Rumours began to circulate, whispers of a curse or worse, a killer among them. The local church held prayer sessions, hoping to exorcise the malevolent force that seemed to have taken hold of their town. Yet, the deaths continued, the mystery deepened, and the fear grew. The Grim Reaper seemed to be working overtime, and the authorities decided to step in. With an uncanny number of deaths, the local police, along with the Texas Rangers, began to delve into the dark mysteries that shrouded the Nokona General Hospital. The investigation was no ordinary task. It was akin to finding a needle in a haystack. The initial stages of the probe were marred by a glaring lack of evidence. The deaths, although alarmingly frequent, did not present any obvious signs of foul play. The victims were all elderly, with their demise often attributed to natural causes or complications from existing medical conditions. This made it incredibly challenging to link these unfortunate occurrences to a single person or even to establish that they were the result of deliberate actions. The investigators found themselves in a labyrinth of medical jargon and complex patient histories. Each case was a puzzle of its own, with pieces scattered across different timelines and intertwined with other medical cases. The difficulty of the task was further amplified by the absence of any apparent motive. There were no financial gains to be made, no personal vendettas to be settled. The only commonality was the presence of a seemingly dedicated nurse, Vicky Dawn Jackson, who was always there, in the thick of things, providing comfort and care to the dying. Adding to the complexity, the hospital was a close-knit community. 
and the idea that one amongst them could be causing harm was met with disbelief and denial. Even the thought of questioning the caregivers, who were regarded as angels of mercy, was met with resistance. But the authorities were undeterred. They knew that they were looking for a malevolent force lurking in the shadows, cloaked in the garb of an angel. And they were fully aware that every minute that passed meant the potential loss of another innocent life. Yet, as the death toll rose, so did the pressure to find answers. The investigation was just beginning, and the search for truth was about to take a dark turn. Little did they know, they were hunting for the dark angel of Nokona. In the midst of chaos, a pattern began to emerge. As the body count in Nokona General Hospital spiked, authorities scrambled to connect the dots. There was a chilling symmetry in the deaths, a rhythm in the madness that was as undeniable as it was horrifying. All roads seemed to lead back to a common link, Vicky Dawn Jackson. The authorities started to notice a pattern. Patients in the care of Jackson were more likely to meet an untimely end. The deaths were not spread evenly across all shifts and all wards. They clustered around one person, one nurse. The more they looked, the more the pattern became clear. Deaths on Jackson's shift were significantly higher than any other. Digging deeper, they found more disturbing evidence. Many of the deceased had been in good health, their conditions stable. They were not on the brink of death. They were recovering, improving. And yet, they were cut down in their prime, their lives snuffed out without warning. And who was there in their final moments? Who was the last face they saw before they slipped into the abyss? Vicky Dawn Jackson, the nurse with the angelic smile and the soft-spoken voice. The one who was supposed to be their guardian, their protector, their angel of mercy. But the angel of mercy was starting to look less like a saviour and more like an angel of death. The pattern was stark, the evidence overwhelming. The deaths were not random. They were not accidents. They were orchestrated, planned, executed with cold-blooded precision. The authorities had been looking for a killer, and now, it seemed, they had found one. Not in the dark alleyways of the city, not in the criminal underworld, but in the whitewashed halls of a small town hospital. In the midst of the healers and the caregivers, they had found a predator, a wolf in sheep's clothing, a killer in a nurse's uniform. The Angel of Mercy was now a prime suspect. As the pieces of the puzzle fell into place, the image of the Dark Angel became clearer. The intricate web of deceit and death that surrounded Vicky Dawn Jackson was finally starting to unravel. The authorities were beginning to connect the dots, and the evidence was piling up against her. Vicky had been a trusted figure in the Nakona General Hospital. She had been given responsibilities, access to areas, and most importantly, to life-altering drugs. One such drug was Mivacurium, a powerful muscle relaxant used in surgeries to induce paralysis. However, in the wrong hands, it could become a lethal weapon, and Vicky's hands were the wrong ones indeed. As the investigations advanced, a chilling pattern began to emerge. The victims, those who had unexpectedly passed away under Vicky's care, were found to have traces of Mivacurium in their systems. This was a drug they had no medical need for, a drug that had no reason to be in their bodies. Yet it was there, and the only common link was Vicky. The investigators discovered that Vicky had unrestricted access to this drug. She was working in the hospital at the time of the unexplained deaths, and she had the knowledge and the opportunity to administer Mivacurium without raising suspicion. The drug was not routinely tested for in autopsies, making it the perfect weapon for a silent killer. As more and more evidence stacked against Vicky, the image of the caring, compassionate nurse started to fade. The dark shadow of suspicion loomed over her, tainting her halo with each passing day. The community was in shock, unable to comprehend how their angel of mercy could be a harbinger of death. The narrative was changing, and the once respected figure was now viewed with fear and mistrust. The dark angel of Nakona was being exposed for what she truly was, a cold, calculating killer. The mask of the Angel of Mercy was slipping. In the court of law, the Dark Angel stood exposed. Vicky Dawn Jackson, once a trusted nurse, now faced the stern gaze of justice. The trial was a spectacle, drawing attention from media outlets across the nation as the horrific allegations against her were laid bare. 
The prosecution presented a damning array of evidence. They painted a chilling picture of a caregiver turned grim reaper, systematically ending the lives of those under her care. The most damning piece of evidence came from the autopsies of her alleged victims. Traces of myvercurium chloride, a potent drug capable of stopping a person's breathing, were found in their systems. This drug was missing from the hospital where Vicky worked, and she had the knowledge and access to use it. Vicky's defense was a hodgepodge of denial and blame shifting. Her attorneys argued that she was a scapegoat, a convenient target for a hospital struggling to explain a spate of unexplained deaths. They pointed to the lack of direct evidence linking her to the administration of the deadly drug. But the prosecutors were unyielding, countering every argument with cold, hard facts. Witnesses took the stand, their testimony a chilling echo of the prosecution's narrative. Colleagues spoke of Vicky's odd behavior, her uncanny presence at the time of the deaths. Family members of the deceased wept openly, their grief a silent testament to the magnitude of Vicky's alleged crimes. In the sterile environment of the courtroom, Vicky Dawn Jackson remained an enigma. She showed little emotion, her face a mask of indifference. Was she the dark angel the prosecution made her out to be? Or was she just an ordinary nurse caught in an extraordinary situation? The trial was a gruelling journey through the darkest corners of human capability. It was a stark reminder of the trust we place in those who care for us at our most vulnerable, and the devastating betrayal when that trust is broken. And then, the jury delivered their verdict. This was the moment of reckoning for Vicky Dawn Jackson, the moment when the Dark Angel's fate was sealed. In a hushed courtroom, a single word echoed, guilty. Vicky Dawn Jackson, once a trusted nurse, was found culpable for a chilling series of murders that had plagued the small town of Nakona, Texas. The verdict came as a wave of relief, yet it was a somber victory, a stark reminder of the lives lost under the care of the Dark Angel. The sentence was unflinching, life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. It was a sentence that matched the gravity of her crimes, a grim recompense for the ten innocent lives she had callously extinguished. The judge's gavel fell, and with it, the finality of Vicky's fate was sealed. Yet the proceedings did not conclude without an emotional outpour. The courtroom was a maelstrom of raw feelings, a testament to the deep wounds Vicky had inflicted on the community. The families of the victims, while relieved at the justice served, were left grappling with a painful truth. Their loved ones were not victims of fate, but of a calculated malevolent act. In the aftermath of the trial, the community of Nakona was left to pick up the pieces. The hospital, once a beacon of care and healing, became a grim reminder of the Dark Angel's reign. Yet, amidst the sorrow, an indomitable spirit prevailed. The town united, vowing to remember the victims, not for their tragic ends, but for the lives they lived. The impact of Vicky's crimes reverberated beyond Nakona. It sent shockwaves through the medical community, prompting a nationwide re-evaluation of hospital protocol and patient safety measures. The Dark Angel had been vanquished, but her legacy served as a chilling reminder of the vulnerability of trust. In the end, the story of Vicky Dawn Jackson is a harrowing tale of trust betrayed and lives stolen too soon. But it's also a story of resilience, of a community that, even in the face of unimaginable tragedy, chose to stand strong and seek justice. Justice was served, but the scars remained. Behind bars, the Dark Angel of Nakona lives out her days. Vicky Dawn Jackson, once a trusted nurse, now a convicted murderer, resides within the stark confines of a Texas prison. Her life has taken a drastic turn from the corridors of Nakona General Hospital to the cold, unforgiving walls of her cell. Time has moved on, but the shadow of her deeds looms large. She no longer dons the white uniform of a caregiver, but the drab garb of a prisoner. Her days are filled not with the bustling activity of a hospital, but the monotonous routine of prison life. There have been no significant events or appeals to mark her time in prison since her sentencing. The gravity of her crimes has left her with little sympathy from the outside world. Her story serves as a haunting reminder of the dark side of humanity. Vicky Dawn Jackson, the Dark Angel, serves as a chilling reminder of how trust can be betrayed in the most horrific manner.